So we are going to continue talking about vectors today. And we're going to start with the i and j unit vectors. All right, vector i is the unit vector whose direction is along the positive x-axis. And they call it a unit vector because it's one unit. And the vector j is the unit vector whose direction is along the positive y-axis. And again, they call it a unit vector because <coughs> its length is one unit. It says, why are the unit vectors i and j important? Well, vectors in the rectangular coordinate system can be represented in terms of i and j. For example, consider vector v with initial point at the origin, which is 0, 0, right here and the terminal point at P, which is right here, at AB, the vector V is shown in figure 6.55 over here, and we can represent V using I and J as V equals AI plus BJ, because you would go this many units this way, A units on the I axis or the X axis, and then you'd go up B units on the J axis or the Y axis. Okay, so it says representing vectors in rectangular coordinates. Vector V from 0, 0 to AB is represented as V equals AI plus BJ. If you're going from 0, 0 to AB, because then you're from the origin. Okay, so we say the real numbers A and B are called the scalar components of V. Note that A is the horizontal component, because you're going this way, and J is the vertical component, because you're going this way. The vector sum ai plus bj is called a linear combination of the vectors i and j. The magnitude of v equals ai plus bj is given by the square root of a squared plus b squared. Basically, guys, you just ignore them. They're just basically x and y coordinates, letting you know that this is along the x-axis and this is along the y-axis. But everything else pretty much is the same. All right, so it says sketch the vector v equals negative 3i plus 4j. Well, that tells me that a equals negative 3 and b equals 4. So if I go to negative 3, positive 4, and make a dot, there's my vector. Okay? Now we have to find its magnitude. Well, the magnitude of v is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. So that's going to be the square root of 9 plus 16, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. So the magnitude of this is 5 units. This is 3 units. This is 4 units. And if you did Pythagorean theorem, you'd also find that that is 5. All right. And there's their drawing of it. Okay. All right, so the vector in example two, the one we just did it, did was represented with its initial point at the origin. What happens when your initial point is not at the origin? See here it's at the origin, here it is not. Well, it says any vector in rectangular coordinates whose initial point is not at the origin can be shown to be equal to a position vector. A position vector is basically if you took it and you moved it, back down to starting at the origin. Okay, so as shown in the following box, this gives us a way to represent vectors between any two points. Again, it's pretty much the head minus tail rule, all right, other than you're putting these i and j coordinates on the end of it. All right, so if you start at x1, y1, and you end at x2, y2, your position vector is going to be the x2 minus x1, i plus y2 minus y1, j. And it says we can use congruent triangles, which are triangles with the same size and shape, to derive this formula. They're just showing you how, did they, how they derived this. Okay? But all you do is basically redo this so that you can position it here and get it from the origin, basically making it a position vector. Um... Yeah, right here. Thus, any vector between two points in rectangular coordinates can be expressed in terms of i and j. In rectangular coordinates, the term vector refers to the position vector. So, that you're, again, you're going to move it back down here to the origin and call it a position.
position vector. And that will be equal to it just down at the origin. All right, so it says let V be uh, the vector from initial point P1 equals 3, negative 1 to terminal point P2, negative 2, 5. So 3, negative 1 would be here to terminal point negative 2, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this, going this way, initial point to terminal point. That's going to erase it, isn't it? There's this vector. Okay, now they want us to write it in terms of i and j. So what I have to do is figure out the position vector, which is going to be the x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. And that's going to give me negative 5, 6, which gives me negative 5i plus 6j. That would be my position vector. So if I graph that, that would make my a at negative 5. And my b would be at 6. So if I go to negative 5, 6. Alright, it would be about, I don't know why, about right there. So from the initial point to that point would be my position vector. These are equal vectors. Alright, I just shifted it to be the position vector. And now I can represent that using the linear combination. Okay. This again shows it. We'll get their picture. It shows it as a position vector. Okay. Alright. Now, how can we find a unit vector? A unit vector is defined to be a vector whose magnitude is 1. Like I said before, that's why they call it a unit vector. In many applications of vectors, it is helpful to find the unit vector that has the same direction as a given vector. It says finding the unit vector that has the same direction as a given non-zero vector v. It says for any non-zero vector v, the vector v over its magnitude is the unit vector that has the same direction as v. Basically, to find this vector, you divide your vector by its magnitude. Alright, so... It says, find the unit vector in the direction of v equals negative 3, 2, and verify that it has a length of 1. Well, to find the unit vector, you take the vector, which is negative 3, 2, and you divide it by the magnitude of v. So i got to find the magnitude of v, which is going to be the square root of negative 3 squared plus 2 squared. That's going to be the square root of 9 plus 4 is 13. So the magnitude is the square root of 13. So my unit vector, right, becomes the vector divided by its magnitude, alright, which is going to be negative 3 over the square root of 13, comma, 2 over the square root of 13. That's my unit vector. It will have, if you graph that, it will have a length of 1. And let's prove it. If I find the magnitude of my unit vector, which is this one, then I would have the square root of negative 3 over the square root of 13 squared plus 2 over the square root of 13 squared. That's going to be the square root of square negative 3 is 9, square the square root of 13 is 13, square the 2 is 4 over square the square root of 13 is 13. That gives me the square root of 13 over 13, which gives me the square root of 1, which gives me a length of 1. So there's my unit vector, and there I verified that it really does have a length of 1. Okay, so if we do this one, they want us to find a unit vector in the same direction as this one. The only difference is they're writing it as a linear combination, so they're using the i and the j. It doesn't matter, all right? To find my unit vector, we take the vector and divide it by the, the magnitude. So I take my vector, which is 5, negative 12, and I divide it by its magnitude, which is the square root of 5 squared plus negative 12 squared, 
So I get 25 plus 144, which gives me the square root of 169, which gives me 13 for the magnitude of V. So I divide it by 13, which gives me 5 over 13, comma, negative 12 over 13. And verify that it's 1 if I find the magnitude of my unit vector. That would be the square root of 5 thirteenth squared plus a negative 12 thirteenth squared, which would be 25 over 169 plus 144 over 169, which will be 169 over 169, which is the square root of 1, which is 1. So there's my unit vector, and I verify that it had a length of 1. Okay, you try one, hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got 3 over the square root of 10, comma, 1 over the square root of 10. Alright, so I have my let u equals 3, 1. So my unit vector is going to be 3, 1 over its magnitude. The magnitude of V is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 10, which gives me 3 over the square root of 10, comma, 1 over the square root of 10. Yeah. And we didn't have to verify that it was 1. Alright, try this one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got 3 fifths i minus 4 fifths j. Alright, we to get our unit vector, we're going to take u over the absolute value of u, which is going to be 3, negative 4 over the magnitude of u is the square root of 3 squared plus negative 4 squared, which is 9, plus 16, which is 25, which is 5, which gives me the unit vector 3 fifths negative 4 fifths, which as a linear combination would be 3 fifths i minus 4 fifths j. Okay? Alright, just a second here. Okay, now I'm back. All right, so writing a vector in terms of its magnitude and direction. It says, consider the vector V equals AI plus BJ, like over here in our picture. Okay, so you've got this vector. The components A and B can be expressed uh, in terms of the magnitude of V and the angle theta that V makes with the positive x-axis. This angle is called the direction angle of V and is shown in figure 6.59 by the definitions of sine and cosine. We have, because look, if you make your right triangle, and this would be my theta, my reference angle, cosine would be adjacent, which is A, over opposite, which is B. So cosine would be adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of V, and sine would be B opposite over hypotenuse magnitude of V. So what you're, what you're trying to do is sometimes you're trying to figure out what the components are when you set up these two equations and solve for A and B. Or sometimes you're trying to solve for theta, in which case you still set up these equations and get theta alone. Okay, so it says find the components of the vector V with direction angle 115 and magnitude of 6. So they're telling me they want me to figure out the components. They want me to figure out what A is and what B is. Well, we have these two formulas here. A equals the magnitude of V times cosine theta and B equals the magnitude of V times sine theta. So, we take, for A, we know the magnitude is 6, and we know the angle is 115 degrees. 
And for B, we know the magnitude is 6, and we know that theta is 115 degrees. So if I type these in, I get A equals negative 2.53570957. Type this in, make sure you're in degrees. B equals 5.4378467222. All right. So that gives me the vector at negative 2.54 comma 5.44 if I round to the nearest hundred. Okay, they would be my vector. Alright. <laughs> you try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got four. Alright, here's my vector. They want me to find the components, so they want me to find AB there. To get A, I take the magnitude, which is 50. 8 times cosine of theta, which is 50, and to find B, I take the magnitude, which is 58, times sine of the angle, so sine 50. If you type those in, you get A equals 37.2816836, and B equals 44.4305777. If you go out two places, that rounds it to those two numbers, and there's your vector. Okay, let's try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got that. If you did not, let's look at why. To get A, we're going to take the magnitude, which is 9, times cosine of 170. And to find B, we're going to take the magnitude times sine of 170. And if you type those in, you get negative 8.8632697777. And B equals 1.5628335599. After 2, cut them off and you get negative 8.86 comma 1.56. Okay, hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got one. All right, my magnitude is 16. My theta is 240. So little a is going to be the magnitude times cosine 240. And little b is going to be the magnitude times sine 240. That's going to give me A equals negative 8, and B equals negative 13.8564046 after 2 gives me negative 13.86. Alright. Uh, another one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. Hopefully you got three. Alright, same thing. We're going to set up to find A is the magnitude times cosine 318. To find B, it's the magnitude times sine 318. Type it in, you get 14.86289651. Type it in, you get negative 13.3826121. Cut it off after 2, you get 14.86 comma negative 13.38. Alright, so now we are going to, they give us A and B. They give me the components. They want the magnitude and the direction. Well, I can find the magnitude easy enough. The magnitude is the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is the square root of 9 plus 4, which is the square root of 13. So there's my magnitude, all right? And then to get my direction, I say that 3, 2 has to equal magnitude, square root 13, times cosine theta, and square root 13 times sine theta. And we're trying to figure out what theta is. Now, you have two equations to set up. You do not need to do both. Alright, you'll get the same answer. You do not need to do both equations. 
So you can either set up 3 equals the square root of 13 cosine theta, or you can set up 2 equals the square root of 13 sine theta. You're claiming that these two vectors are equal, so this has to equal this, and 2 has to equal 1. So if I pick either one of them and solve it, to solve this one, I'm going to divide by the square root of 13. That gives me 3 square roots of 13 equals cosine theta. So to kill cosine, I'm going to use arc cosine. And I get theta equals 33.690067.53, which means theta is approximately 34 degrees. Well, we should maybe say 34.7 degrees. If you solved this one, I promise you'll get the same answer. I divide by the square root of 13, divide by the square root of 13. I get 2 over the square root of 13 equals sine theta. To kill sine, I'm going to use arc sine, which gives me theta equals, if you type that in, you get 33.690067.53, which is 33.7 degrees. You get the same answer. It doesn't matter. The only thing you got to be careful of is you got to make sure that wherever that angle is, you're in the right quadrant. For you, I'm at 3, 2, which is right here. I'm in quadrant 1. Is 34.7 degrees in quadrant 1? Yeah, then it's good. If it's not, you're going to have to subtract from 360 to get the correct angle. Okay? So... If we try this one for B, this vector that we got going on right here, notice that we're in quadrant 3. If I set it up, i got to find the magnitude of V, which is going to be the square root of negative 2 squared plus negative 5 squared. That's the square root of 4 plus 25 is 29, so there's your magnitude. So now to get my direction angle, I set up negative 2, negative 5, equals the square root of 29 cosine theta, the square root of 29 sine theta. I'm just going to uh, solve the first one. So if I say negative 2 equals the square root of 29 cosine theta, divide by the square root of 29, divide by the square root of 29, I get cosine theta equals negative 2 divided by the square root of 29. To get theta alone, I kill cosine with arc cosine, and you get theta equals 111.80 degrees. Well, the problem with that, guys, is 111 is not in quadrant 3, it's in quadrant 4. So what we do is we take 360 and we subtract our answer, 111.8, and I get 248.2. And that would be between, that would be in the right quadrant. So there would be my theta. Okay? Alright, you try one, hit pause, come back when you're ready. And you should get one. Alright, i got to find the magnitude of my vector, which is the square root of 3 squared plus 121 squared, which is the square root of 130. So if I set up 311 equals the square root of 130 times cosine theta, the square root of 130 times sine theta, if I just solve the first one, I would say that 3 has to equal the square root of 130 times cosine theta, divide by square root of 130, I get cosine theta equals 3 over the square root of 130. To kill cosine, I'm going to use arc cosine. And I get theta equals 74.74 degrees. Alright. Try another one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. Alright, and hopefully you got number two.
Alright, the absolute or the magnitude of V is going to be the square root of 5 square roots of 3 squared plus a negative 5 squared. That's going to be 25 times 3 plus 25, which is going to be 75 plus 25 is 100, which makes my magnitude 10. So I have 5 square root of 3, negative 5, equals 10 cosine theta, 10 sine theta. Again, I'm just going to set up the first one, so I have 5 square roots of 3 equals 10 cosine theta. I'm trying to get theta alone, so divide by 10, divide by 10, and I get cosine theta equals 5 square roots of 3 over 10. Kill cosine with arc cosine, and I get theta equals 30 degrees. So why is 330? Well, if you look, 5 squared to 3, negative 5, that's a positive x and a negative y. That's in quadrant 4. 30 degrees is in quadrant 1. So again, if I take 360 and I subtract 30, I get 330 degrees, which would be in quadrant 4. Okay. Alright, try this one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got the square root of 34 and 121 degrees. To find the magnitude of V, I'm going to do the square root of negative 3 squared plus 5 squared, which gives me 9 plus 25, which is 34. So my magnitude is the square root of 34. So if I set up negative 3, 5, equals square root of 34 times cosine theta, square root of 34 sine theta. Again, if I just solve the first one, negative 3 equals the square root of 34 times cosine theta. Divide by the square root of 34. I get cosine theta equals negative 3 over the square root of 34. Kill cosine with arc cosine, and I get theta equals, if you type it in, 120.963756, and it said to the nearest tenth, so 6 bumps that up to 0, which bumps that up to a 1, which bumps, leaves that whatever, so I get 121.0 degrees. Alright, so how do you find a unit vector? Well, you take the vector and you divide it by its magnitude. How do you find the direction of a vector? Well, you set up AB equals the magnitude of V times cosine theta, magnitude of V times sine theta. Alright, and how do you find the direction angle of a vector? Again, you use set up this formula and solve for what you don't know. Magnitude, cosine theta, magnitude, sine theta. Alright, so we are at homework. Happy homeworking. And I will see you next time.